I give you honor. Hallelujah. Do you want to your name this morning? Do you want to your name this morning, God? I thank you because you are everlasting, God. Hallelujah. I thank you because you're fighting every battle for us this morning. I thank you because you're fighting every battle this morning. Father God, the battle is not ours, but it's yours, oh God. I thank you because of you, I am victorious this morning. I thank you because we as a people are victorious this morning because of you, oh God. And we give you praise for that this morning. Lord, we give you thanks for that this morning. Lord, I give you glory this morning. We give you honor. We welcome your presence. We welcome your Holy Spirit. Lord, I welcome you this morning to do the work that you need to do in our lives this morning. Lord, and we thank you for the word this morning. The word is going to bring life, Father God. The word is going to bring health and healing to our bodies this morning. We thank you for the word, Father God, that is going to change and transform minds, lives, spirit, homes. Father God, it's going to change and transform communities this morning, Father God. That your word is going to change and transform the Commonwealth of the Bahamas this morning. Father God, through one person, Lord, if we go out and minister to one person, and they minister to one person, it will bring healing into our communities this morning. It will bring healing into the Commonwealth of the Bahamas this morning. It will bring healing to the lives of your people this morning. God, I thank you for placing a revival in our lives this morning. God, I thank you for placing the revivals in our homes this morning. God, I thank you for raising up children, men and women, Father God, that will, will not bow to Baal, Father God. We will not bow to the tricks and the plans of the scheme of the enemy. Oh God, but we will stand firm upon your word, your word which is life, your word which is health, your word which is strength. Father God, your word that is sharper than any two-edged sword this morning, Father God. We thank you for your word, God, that's not going to destroy the plans of the enemy this morning. We thank you for your word, Father God, that's going to bring victory to our lives this morning. We thank you for your word this morning, Father God, that will encourage our hearts and our minds to go on, to press on, oh God. We thank you for your word this morning, Father God, that will bring you life this morning. And I bless you, I praise you, and I exalt you for what you're going to do in the lives of your people today. God, I ask you to minister to each heart that may come through these doors, each heart that may be broken, each heart that may be downcast, each heart that may be hurting, Father God. Lord, you know each need, Father God. You know each need, Father God. Minister to those that may have lost in family, Father God. May we having lost, Father God, or going through hurt this morning, or who have family in the hospital, who have family that is sick and depressed, oh God. Lord, I thank you for bringing healing. Hallelujah. I thank you for your healing virtue this morning, God. I thank you for ministering to each heart, ministering to each life, ministering to each home. God, I thank you for raising up women and men that will seek you earnestly, oh God. I thank you for raising up the body of Christ to seek you, Father God. Intercessors, prayer warriors that will seek the face of God, Father God. Men and women that will humble themselves, Father God, under your mighty hand this morning. Men and women that will come to see you, Father God, whom to know is life eternal, Father God. We bless you for what you're going to do and what you have done. And you have taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will, be, will be done on, on earth, earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily, our daily bread. bread. And forgive and us, us our trespasses, our trespasses as we as forgive, we forgive those, those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forevermore, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, those of you that are in the house, those of you that have joined us by live media, we want you to put your hands together and open your mouth and give God a praise in the house wherever you are. Let's stand right now and let's begin to create the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Let's begin to create the atmosphere continually that God will dwell amongst us even this morning. Wherever you are, come on, get up out of that bed. Wherever you are, get yourself together.
together. Let's worship God. Let's praise him in spirit and in truth. Amen. We are so pleased to be able to come in live worship to you once again. Coming to you from Word of Truth Ministries International. Of course, located in beautiful Nassau, the Bahamas. If you're here locally, we are Gladstone Road and the Word of Truth Boulevard. And we want to encourage you. Open your spirits. Open your hearts. Open your minds. Let's worship God because there is nothing like worshiping God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's make the declaration. I was singing a chorus earlier this morning. Simply says, we have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him. Worship Christ the Lord. I trust that that is your declaration even this morning as you are in the house, as you are watching us indeed around the world. Amen. The Bible declares in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of thereof the world and they that dwell therein for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods who shall ascend into the hill of the lord or who shall stand in his holy place he that hath clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Selah, or meditate on this. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads O ye gates even lift them up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory i don't know about you but i've come for an awesome worship experience this morning amen as our worship ministry comes to lead us further in this time of worship amen hallelujah we have come into this house gathered in its name to worship him we have come we
worship him. Come on, worship him. We bless you today. Hallelujah. We adore you. We recognize that you are sovereignty. We thank you for invoking our presence here today. We worship you. He abides. Hallelujah. He abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way for the comforter abides with me. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way for the hands in all my life I see. And the reason of my bliss of my bliss is the secret that the comforter
For your mercy never fails me. All my days have been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of your goodness. I will sing of your mercy. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Even when I didn't know it, when I didn't recognize it, he was there. He was faithful. Even when I wasn't saved, he was faithful. In the world, he was still faithful. Hallelujah. I love you. For your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I went. Oh, 
It's running out. 
even know it. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of love. I will sing. I will sing of the goodness. Of the Hallelujah. He deserves the glory. The King of Kings deserves all praises. Hallelujah. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of all. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to
worship him. He's worthy of our praises. He's worthy to be adored. It might not be going the way that you want it to go, but he's still worthy. He knows what he is doing. He knows what he is doing. All things working out for good. Hallelujah. For he deserves your worship. Don't hold back on your worship. Not because it ain't going how you want. Don't hold back on your worship. Don't hold back on your praise. Don't hold back on your worship. worship today. He deserves our praise. He deserves our adoration. He deserves all that we are. Hallelujah. You deserve it. From the top, my hallelujah. your name today, God. more times my hallelujah sanctuary wherever you are watching right now in this worship experience I challenge you to open your mouth your heart your spirit your mind and just give God worship because he deserves it all he deserves it all he deserves it all he deserves it all, he it all. amen he deserves it all hallelujah my, 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 my. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You deserve it, God. You deserve it, you deserve it. I give you honor, I give you glory, I worship you, God. Because you deserve it, Jesus. We bless you even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay right in this spirit of worship as you're seated in the house today. Take it a level higher. Take it a level higher in God as we continue to worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship ministry. You deserve it, Jesus. Oh, you deserve it, Lord. Oh, you deserve it. 
deserve it, Jesus. You deserve all my honor, all my worship. I give you praise today. God, you deserve it, Lord. Oh, you deserve it, Jesus. You deserve it, Lord. Oh, you deserve it, Jesus. You deserve my worship today. So I declare my hallelujah belongs to It's not a phrase, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah. Come on, I challenge you one more time. Would you throw your hands in the air? And would you just tell God, I thank you for the opportunity to worship you today in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Thank God for the opportunity to worship him in spirit and in truth this morning. Hallelujah. 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 What an awesome presence. What an awesome atmosphere. Hallelujah. We're in God's presence. Psalmist David said it's like this in Psalm 16. In his presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to the worship experience. If you are just joining us, of course we're coming to you from Word of Truth Ministries International beautiful Bahamas. We like to say Nassau, the Bahamas. We are a people that declare that we want to worship God in spirit and in truth and in the very beauty of holiness. We want to be the ones that God is seeking after. When God comes seeking for us because we are worshiping Him in spirit and in truth, then God does what he desires to do amongst us and God can meet us right where we are the atmosphere is changed when we worship God in spirit and in truth hallelujah glory be to God hallelujah Jesus whatever you need from God in this atmosphere the Bible says we have not because we ask not and the Bible says when we ask we ought to ask in faith not asking amiss in other words not believing for what we ask for in fact I challenge you right now to practice it before we even go into prayer would you ask God for what you need in accordance with his word wherever you are right now You've got a need from God. I want to encourage you. Ask him, ask him, ask him. Ask him, ask him, ask him. God, I ask for discernment, for wisdom. God, I ask for overflow. I ask God in the lives of your people for healing, for deliverance. I ask for provision right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Bible says in Thessalonians we ought to pray without ceasing. We ought to pray without ceasing. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in prayer. I believe that God still can do anything. In fact, not only do I believe it, I confess it because I know that God has done some awesome things in my life. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't just believe it. I confess it that God has done some awesome things in my life. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Help me out yourself. People, would you give me some more volume on my monitors, please? I want to preserve my voice a little bit. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God has done some awesome things in my life. Not only has he done, but he's doing some awesome things in my life. Amen. And I bless him today because he is faithful. Oh, what an atmosphere. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I dare you to take another few moments just to give him praise, just to give him glory, just to thank him because of who he is in your life. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory, glory, glory. Today, you're not dead today physically. You're breathing God's breath. People that went to sleep last night didn't wake up this morning. I don't need to remind you of the murders that we have experienced in our country even over the last 24 hours. Internationally, I see the rockets that are coming over from the Gaza Strip into Tel Aviv and Israel as Hamas is fighting with Israel again. I don't need to tell you that in India, the coronavirus is coming out of, is, is, has gotten out of control. I don't need to tell you that there's wars and turmoil in our world and man is confused. But I, what I want to tell you is this, that the answers or the answer to the problems of humanity is Jesus the Christ. And that's the reason why I worship him. That's the reason why I praise him. That's the reason why I lift him up. Because he is the answer. He is the answer to every situation that I face in life. Amen. 
That's the reason why I get happy. That's the reason why I can declare when I think about the goodness of Jesus. Oh, glory. And all that he's done for me. My soul cries out, Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Ooh, I'm going to go into word, y'all. I'm going to go into word. My God, my God, my God. Uh, all of the glory. I declare right now, wherever you're watching me around the world, I declare God's word into your life. I speak life to that dead situation that God wants to live again. I speak it in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to that situation where sickness is in body, spirit, soul, mind, relationship. I speak the healing touch of God. For he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. I speak boldness. I speak courage. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. I speak victory into your life for you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loved you and gave himself for you. And I speak the peace of God for the Bible declares he will keep us in perfect peace as our minds are stayed on him. The peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I speak the favor of God on your life today for grace. It is the grace of God, the unmerited favor of God, the enabling power of God. For, our, for by grace are you saved. That's what the word declares. By grace are you saved through faith. It is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Receive the gift today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I speak the hope of God. If in this life only we have hope, we are like most men, most miserable. I don't know about you. I'm talking a little bit about it today. But I, I live with great expectation that God is going to do an awesome thing in my life. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you. I live with great expectation that God will always work in my life because he is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory be to God, hallelujah. I'm expecting great things. Oh, I'm expecting great things. Oh, I'm expecting great things. Oh, great things. Do you really believe that today, if you are, sing with me. Oh, I'm expecting great things. I'm oh, expecting. Oh, I'm expecting great things. Oh, great things. Come on, sing it out with expectation. Oh. Expecting great things. Oh, I'm expecting great things. Do you believe it? Oh, I'm expecting great things. Oh, great things. Where am I expecting it in my life?
spontaneous well y'all y'all sit down sit down sit down sit down hallelujah all across the sanctuary that, that's what expectation does causes you to have hope hallelujah causes you to have a pep in your step gives you joy in your spirit changes the atmosphere around hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I'm not giving the devil any credit. I don't care how my voice sounds. I'm going to preach anyhow. God is so good. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Oh, y'all, y'all fellas going to call me one more time. I'm expecting great things. Oh, I'm expecting great things. Oh, I'm expecting great things. Oh, great thing. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 For those of you that are not in the house, you're missing it. Because the atmosphere in the house is charged that anything, anything is possible. The Bible says to them that believe, guess what? God is not stingy right where you are. Anything is possible to them that believe. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Father, now in the name of Jesus. God, as I endeavor to share your word today, hallelujah, I pray for divine unction, divine strength, like I've never had before. Speak to us afresh today, God. Glory be to God. Speak to us. We open our spirits to hear what you would say to us even today. Father, we declare that nothing shall block us from receiving that which you have for us today. We will hear with clarity and your word will fall on good ground and bring forth abundant fruit in our lives. Oh God, I thank you for honoring, allowing us the honor of being in your presence. Now, Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We will be careful to give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. 
Amen. And amen. As is our custom, which is a good custom, I want to encourage you to stand with us now as we read from the Holy Writ on the New Covenant, in particular Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 19 through 25, and then verse 36 through 39. Hallelujah. As is also our custom, I like to read together because I believe God's word that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we hear what we declare, our faith, our faith is encouraged. Amen. In Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 19 through 25 and verse 36 through 39 hallelujah thank you it's on the screen thank you hallelujah god i need you like i've never needed you before in jesus name let's read together please having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. But exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Down to 36 through 39, please. For ye have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition or unto evil, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. God's word is blessed and we say, Amen. So let it be established. So let it be settled. Amen. I wish to bring to our hearing today from the thought, hold on to our faith in God. Hold on to our faith in God. Whatever we do, this is no time to be slacking the ride. Whatever we do, this is no time to be turning back. Whatever we do, more than 
ever before, we must trust God because he is our only source that can sustain us in all times. Amen. Reading this text, and God brought to my attention some things that I want to share with us today. First of all, I want us to recognize, you can tell by what's happening in our world, that humanity is searching constantly to hold on to something. You can tell, you can tell. People are trying to hold on to their status. People are trying to hold on to their money. People are trying to hold on to their intellect. People are trying to hold on to their religion. But at the end of the day, they recognize that it is not enough to bring happiness and meaning to their lives. You have a whole lot of folks got a whole lot of money, but yet their minds perplexed. You got a whole lot of folks that after they've reached to the top of the ladder, they recognize that they have put the ladder, as somebody says, up to the wrong wall. And they are more miserable than they were when they first started. You see, you've got to understand that God has created all of humanity and he has caused us to want to have purpose and meaning for our lives. I'm talking about hold on to your faith. And it doesn't matter how you try to fill the void. The void can only be filled by the creator himself and that is God. Because when we hold on to God, everything else comes into perspective. Amen? So God reminds us, hold on to our faith. When we look at the book of Hebrews, we understand that the book of Hebrews was, was written primarily to take us from law into grace. In other words, that man was, was, was trying to have salvation through the killing of bulls and bullocks and cows and what have you. And every day they would go to the temple that was law. They would go to the temple and they would kill the bulls and the bullocks and the cows. And they would sprinkle the blood on the altar and they would ask God for their, uh, to forgive them. But yet they still felt guilty. Yet they still had to go year after year, day after day to sacrifice. But Hebrews tells us that the reason why we can hold on to our faith in God because Jesus is the best way he is a better way than what we were used to and so Jesus says I gave my life once and for all I died so that you can have joy in the midst of the sorrows of life so that you can have substance and meaning in your life when you hold on to me because that's what man requires every one of us want to have meaning to our life that's the reason why we do some of the things that we do that's the reason why we buy some of the brands that we buy because we think that if we have outward stuff that it would help us to have some inward satisfaction but the more outward stuff you have you recognize that you are more miserable because the inside is not satisfied and the only way that the inside can be satisfied if you receive the ultimate sacrifice and that sacrifice is Jesus Christ himself. So why do we need to hold on to him? Why do we need to hold on to God? There's the reason why. Because we are living in a troubling world. It's one thing to hold on to the things of this world and recognize after a while that you have built your life upon the sand. You know how sand is. When you build your life upon the sand, you will discover that the waves and the winds will come in, that the storms will blow. And if your life is not built on substance, if your life is not built on something that's sound, when the troubles of life come, I'm going to tell you this, my friends, no matter how long you live, that life will have its troubles. And you've got to be able to hold on to something that will not cause you to lose your ever loving mind you've got to be able to hold on to something that will not cause you to just throw in the towel you've got to be able to hold on to something or someone who is able to guide you through the maze of confusion that you will face in life and the only person who can give you substance and stability is Jesus the Christ 
I'm telling you folks as well, look at what's happening in our world. People are holding on to a whole lot of stuff and they're discovering that the stuff and the people that they are holding on to is bringing failure to their lives. They're not satisfied. So God says, tell them for me, Lester, that they've got to hold on to me because I'm the better way. In fact, I'm the best way. When you hold on to God, somebody says, he's like a bridge over troubled waters. Have you ever seen a troubled water and you've been trying to get over and you can't seem to get over, but when you call on the name of Jesus, the Bible says demons tremble at the name of Jesus when you call on Jesus somebody said call on him when you call on Jesus he'll bring peace to your troubled situation he will cause you to have hope in the midst of despair that's why you've got to hold on to him I'm just giving an introduction y'all let me get into the text David puts it like this in Psalm chapter 20 and verse 7 look at how David puts it let me get there y'all in Psalm chapter 20 and verse 6 and 7, it says what? Now know I, this is after he's discovering that God is his only source. He says, now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Then David says, here's the reason why I can say this because I have a whole lot of stuff. So David reminded us, he said, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. When you hold on to God, you hold on to your faith. You can't call on your horses to save you. You can't call on your chariots to save you. There come some moments in your life when the only thing that you can do is call on Jesus. In fact, you can't even call on him sometimes. You just got to moan a while because the pain is so heavy to bear. But the Bible says the Spirit of God takes up our groaning before the throne room of God and God hears our every need. This world needs Jesus. This world needs to hold on to someone who has substance that can stand the test of time. And I can tell you this, the only person who we can hold on to is Jesus. I don't know why God has me laboring here a moment. Maybe some of you in the house or some of you listening, you've been disappointed because you've been holding on to some things and people. But God sent me by to tell you on this Sunday morning that you got to refocus yourself. You got to remind yourself that these things have failed you. But when you hold on to God, though I walk through the valley, David said, of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Then I like this part. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That's the God who I'm holding on to. Got to hold on to your faith. You've got to hold on to your faith in God. Because the things of this world will fail you. You've also got to understand that many lives, everything that we hold on to, we must consider whether it is substance that has eternal value. A whole lot of folks got a lot of things, but does it have eternal value? Will it not fade away? When you leave this earth. Because here is the reality. Hebrews 9 27. It is appointed unto man. Once to die. And after death. The judgment. What is going to be. Your eternal value. And my eternal value. When we stand before God. Because God says like this. When he comes. Shall he find faith in the earth. You've heard me quote that scripture time and time again. What does it mean preacher? Do you have a firm persuasion. That when all hell is breaking loose in your life. Though you may be in the fiery furnace. Though you may be in the lion's den. 
Though you may be, I don't know what it means, but people say it as broke as foot, whatever that is. Though you may have nothing in this world, your hope is in God and you're holding on to him and you can really declare because you have the experience now like Job declared, though he slay me, good God, yet will I trust him. I don't know about you, but there's some moments in my life where I've come to the conclusion I've trusted in some things. I've trusted in some people and I've found out that they failed me but when I put my trust in God God will never leave me nor forsake me where's your faith you gotta hold on to that which you believe you've got to hold on to that which you know see the reason why I serve God because I know God is good to me I have experience with him I know when God kept my mind. I know some of you can testify. I, I know when God healed my body. I know when God brought me out of some scrapes, y'all, that I thought I wouldn't have made it out of. I know when God helped me when I was going down for the last. And God, like Peter, he reached out his hand and he kept me from falling under. I know what God has done in my life. That's the reason why I can tell you and preach this gospel. I'm holding on to God because I've tried a whole lot of stuff but ain't nobody satisfies like God somebody said ain't nothing like the real thing I've come by to tell you that the real thing is Jesus the Christ Woo! oh God ain't nothing somebody needs to know you need to tell your neighbor ain't nothing like the real thing baby ain't nothing ain't nothing what is the real thing the real thing is Jesus the Christ it is he who came down to this earth to die in human flesh and lives again so that I can come before him for he is my high priest and I can come and bring whatever my need is and God will hear my cry the world, look at what the world is holding on to. Some people are holding on to science. I believe in science, but science ain't the real thing. Because one scientist says this thing, and the other one saying that thing. Some people believe in political systems. Oh yeah, political system says one thing, and another system says another thing. Some people believe in religious orders. Oh yeah, religion is man's attempt to try to see how they can please God by doing stuff. But I'm a person, I hold on to God because of the grace of God. I was a wretched no down, like the bishop says. I was a wretched no down, good for nothing, scum of the earth. But for the grace of God, I ain't talking to some of y'all. I'm just talking to myself. But for the grace of God, he lifted me up out of the miry clay. See, sometimes you got to remind your Yourself, so you can get a shout for yourself he lifted me up from the miry clay and he planted my feet upon the rock to stay that's the reason why I can sing and shout because Jesus he lifted me up so when the enemy comes to try to bring doubt in my mind I go back to my experiences. See, because sometimes you've got to hold on to your faith just from your experiences when you can't see your way forward. You, you got to hold on. Oh God, help me here. I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying to behave myself. You got to hold on to your faith when your cupboard is bare. Okay, let me come to where you are. You got to hold on to your faith when the man is trying to lock up your son, your daughter, and your daddy. You got to hold on to your faith when you go to work saying, I'm going to make it here, and the man scratches the match and says, you're fired today. You got to hold on to your faith when your body is wrecked with pain, and you got to remind yourself that the God that I serve is still able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. We got to hold on to something. What are you holding on to? Things of this world? Some of my ankle hold and grips. 
Shataya. It grips the solid rock, not just any rock, the solid rock. And then somebody said that rock is Jesus. <laughs> He's the only one. That rock is Jesus. I, I can tell you, my friends, when you hold on to Jesus, no matter how the winds blow, no matter how you stagger, no matter how the devil tries to pull you, God will anchor you like he did with Moses. I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. So while you're going through the storms, he said, you're just going through I'm experiences right now for lo I'm with you all the way even unto the end of the age I will be with you and I will be for you what you need me to be hold on to your faith in God this is no time to be giving up this ain't no time to be trying something new that you know you have no experience with. People will try to tell you, oh, I, I, I got a new version of God. No, I choose to trust the God that I know. Because see, the God that I know, I got experience with him. The God that I know transcends time and space. The, the God that I know, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. The God that I know has helped me when I had nothing. The God that I know, he is the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. The God that I know, he's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. The God that I know, he is the one who speaks to my storms, speaks to the winds and the waves, and he declares, peace be still. The God that I know, even and when the enemy comes against me like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. The God that I know says I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loves me and gave himself for me. The God that I know says I'm victorious. The God that I know says I will be with you even in the lion's den, baby. You'll sleep on lions like a pillow. The God that I know, the fire will not burn you because you will walk in the fire as though it's air conditioned. The God that the God that I know is he who speaks to the winds and the waves of my life and declares peace be still this is the God that I know okay let me come practical the God that I know will be somebody who will come to my doorstep and say bishop I just come to drop a little letter for you here and they smile and walk away and out drops a check for fifty thousand dollars can I be real with you the God that I know said bishop what do you want let's go and pick out what you want the God that I know will cause your enemies to be your footstool the God that I know will cause your enemies to bless you the God that I know uh, I don't need to be in the in crowd I don't need to be an influencer with millions of followers the God that I know he is greater than <laughs> the God that I know that's the God that I want to present to you that you and I can hold on to so when Paul declares in Hebrews he says hold fast verse 23 let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering why why, why do we need to hold fast the profession of of our faith because we are going to be tried and tested from places that you least expect let, let me talk to parents let me talk to parents you love your children here yeah I do you ever get some moments where well it can go both ways let me let me not let me not be prejudiced let me go both ways children children you ever get some times when your parents just get on your nerves and parents, don't you have some moments when you say, boy, if I didn't know Jesus like I know him, you would not be living today. I don't believe in child abuse, y'all. There are some days when you recognize that you're going to hold on to your faith, but your faith is going to be tested. And you've got to know that the God that you are professing can help you through the testing. See, see, God doesn't tempt anyone, but God allows temptation. 
But God will test you to see where you really stand in him. And God will test you to show you that you can make it to take you to a higher dimension in him. We've got to pass the test. I'm going to age myself. I'm going to age myself. When I was in high school, we took the common entrance exam to get to grade six. Y'all don't know about that. And then when I was in high school, I was in junior high school. Uh, you can go from grade nine to grade 11. I went to C.I. Gibson, big up for C.I. Gibson Rattlers and Aaron Bailey Pacers. I went from C.I. Gibson to the Pacers. Yeah. And I went from grade nine straight into grade 11. You know why? Because I took some tests. And they said, if you have, I think it was, I can't even remember now. I think if you have seven BJCs with A's and B's, you can go from grade nine to grade 11. And guess what? I passed the test. So I went from grade nine to grade 11. Now, I didn't just pass the test just like that. I had some days when I was scratching my head. I had some days when I wonder not, did I put the, way, the, the, the right answer? Test, it means, a, a test simply means, oh God, help me hear revelation. A test shows what you have learned in the process. You wonder why you're still impatient? <laughs> I'm going to get down there because the Bible says there, it talks about the, you have need of patience. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. You, you wonder why you you still going through this test of patience? Verse 36, but you have need of patience. You, no, no, it, it's not maybe possibly. He says, you need patience. He says, and I'm going to get it from you if you're going to serve me. I'm going to get it from you one way or another. And so he'll send someone in your way. Oh, Lord. Just to see whether that shout you had five minutes ago will still be the shout seven minutes from now. And that, that you, you, the Bible says, verse 36, but ye have need of patience. In other words, God says, you got to have a level head because you can't just fly off the hood just like that every time. And some of us flying off the hood because people look at us crazy. People ain't checking for you. God's trying to make us better. Nothing against people who cross eyed, but I used to tease folks and I said, God, forgive me. But you look, people, you tell the people to look at you, you don't understand the person cross eyed. They, they looking at you. You just finished shouting, speaking in town, let go my Honda, my Mercedes, my Jaguar. And three minutes later, the Jaguar, Mercedes, and Honda gone out the window. Because you ain't speaking in tongues no more. You saying stuff that they really could understand. Girl, if I lay down my salvation, that's the problem. You're going to lay down your salvation. Bob, God's going to come. And you're going to go to a Christless hell. God says, you got to hold on to your faith in God. Because your faith is going to be tested. I'm not a drinker. The story. I'm not, I stopped drinking a long time ago when I got saved. I don't believe in not drinking alcohol. That's me. The Bible says wines are mockery and strong drinkers raging. He that's deceived thereby is not wise. That's my uh, interpretation. No, you deal with God for yourself. I just went out. I might have told you the story. I went somewhere to an establishment, sat down with this business person, and they talked to me a little bit. And, and, and here's how they introduced me, Sister Sabrina. They said, Bishop, you could take some wine. I said, No, no, I don't drink. I said, you could take some wine, man. Come on, after a little while. Come on, take some wine. I said, I don't drink. I, I, she's calling me Bishop. Why? She offered me the wine, you know. All of a sudden, she says, this is what she said. Man, bring Bishop the cup and put it right there. She put the cup in front of me. She says, Bishop, drink some of that wine. I held that cup. I held that cup. I held that cup. I made it as though I was drinking a little bit. Put it in my mouth and put it back down. I'm confessing. Good for the soul. When I went outside, man, I took that cup and poured everything down in the road. She said, in fact, when I was leaving the bishop, I'm make sure you don't pour my wine out. Well, so said, so done. I told you I don't drink. If you listen to this, no, I don't drink. I still don't drink. That's me. Now, some of us have been in some precarious testing situations. Don't look at that girl. You say, but I just, she just looks so good. Don't look, don't go with that fella. But he just sold six packs. 
back and muscles. Don't move that money. Well, you know, my children really need some food. And I don't have no fella in the house. And only me, I'm the only worker. And you know, I only gonna move a couple dollars today. Then the couple dollars become thousands and thousands. And all of a sudden, the same dicty person who was walking in their business establishment is now doing the bank lane shuffle. Y'all don't know what the bank lane shuffle is. You gotta hold on to your faith. Because your faith is going to be tested. And you've got to know where you stand. You know, you know. let, let, let me confess. You know, all the time I do. Sometimes I got to confess, uh, Brother Danny, for people who make me mad, I thought a cuss word. I got to confess. That, that ain't none of y'all. Y'all say sanctified. Y'all, I know y'all say y'all sanctified. Whoever watching, y'all never even think a cuss word. Where there's been some days, y'all. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Where people got on. I say my last name. It ain't even my nerve, you know. It's the nerve that God gave me. And yet. I thought a word. I said, God, I can't say the word. Please forgive me. That ain't for y'all folks. That ain't for y'all folks. <laughs> That's why I pray prayers like, God, forgive me for sins I don't even know about. Just in case you come, I don't want to be left behind. Because I got to hold fast to the profession of my faith. I got to hold fast. Why? Because when the test comes, we have got to pass the test. One of the greatest prophets or patriarchs of the Bible. Y'all know him, Moses. Moses missed the promised land. Because he failed the test of patience. As anointed as Moses was. Only two fellas, if I recall correctly in the Bible, only two people I've discovered in reading that God said he speaks to them face to face. God spoke to Moses. This is the same Moses that went up in Mount Sinai 40 days and 40 nights with God. And yet, he missed the promised land. Because the people got him angry. And his patience got the most of him. And he broke the tablets. As anointed as he was. This is the same Moses that said, God, let me see your face. And God says, you can't see my glory, Moses. You can't see my glory. Moses said, God, I've got to see your glory. And Moses got so much on God's case. God said, okay, Moses. He said, I'm going to hide you in the cleft, in the, in the little crack in the rock and I'm going to hold my hand. Look at, look at how bad God is. God said I'm going to go forward and come backward. He said I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock and then when I hide you my hand is going to be so great that when I pass by you're going to see my hand depart. This is the same Moses. All of us have some moments. Don't look so deep y'all. No matter how anointed you are. All of us got some moments. That if God was to really pull back the curtain. <laughs> that same anointed person that was shouting would be the person that had a great fall. But here is the reality of grace versus law. God says that he's a God of grace and he does not condemn you if you come back asking forgiveness. How do I know that? Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Let me give you a few points and then we're going to get out of here as to why you have to hold on to your faith in God. You have to hold on to your faith in God. Why? Because your faith produces hope in troubling times. People say things like, in fact, Christians say things like, well, if it was me, I wouldn't do that. You know what you do when you trouble if you don't have Jesus. In fact, let me correct that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Peter had Jesus and still cuss and denied him. Am I right? <laughs> Peter.
Peter not only had Jesus, Peter was with Jesus. So don't get so deep theologically and spiritually and say, well, that ain't me. You are that. All of us have sinned. If a man has not, says he has not sinned, then he is a liar and the truth is not in him. That's what the word says. What you do is you just own your issues. And you ask God for help. That's how you sustain you. See, folks, let, let me. That's like, that's like humanity trying to run away from the sun. You can't run from the sun. The sun shines over the whole earth. God gives us examples to see. So in other words, you can't run from God. How can you run from a God who knows your thoughts before you think it? How can we run from a God who answers our prayers before we speak it? How you can run from him? The Bible says at the end of the day, when we put our trust and our faith in God, when we hold on to our faith, our profession in God, there is hope that we have in troubling times. Hope with expectation. That's why I sung that song earlier. I'm expecting great things. See, when you live in, in a life of expectation, you never live a bored life. <laughs> Ooh. Let, me, let me go natural on some of y'all. I was sitting in the back there earlier. You know, we get to church, my Matthew and I, thank God for my son, kind of early. And uh, I was sitting in the back and I just turned. And I was watching all the cameras. And outside the parking lot was empty. And I said, God, I'm expecting them to come. <laughs> so I didn't get perturbed. I just sat there and I said a prayer. I said, God... I'm expecting them to come. In other words, I'm expecting folks to be in the house. Well, y'all in the house, eh? And even if y'all weren't in the house, guess what? We're alive, y'all, and someone out there in the world is watching. Why? Because they write to me. When you have expectation, there is no boredom in your life because you're always looking for the next great move of God. In fact, when you have expectation, you rejoice in trouble because you know you won't get out because God's with you. Okay, okay, let me go Bible. Three little boys, 17 years of age, possibly, maybe historically, says, King Nebuchadnezzar, don't care what you do. We ain't bowing to you. And here is one of the most profound statements in the word of God. All the word of God is profound. 17 days was no deep theological fellas. They weren't no fellas who knew God for long. Historically only about seven. Think about a 17 year old today about to be thrown in the fiery furnace turned up seven times hotter. Do I have any 17 year olds in the house? Anybody in the house 17? Anybody quickly? No, no 17 year olds. All right, nobody. All right. How old are you, Jonathan? 16, son of the Jonathan. Son of the quickly there. Yeah, that's a 16-year-old. Now, I don't know if the Hebrew boys were as tall as him. I don't know how big they were. The Bible said they were some handsome fellas. Thank you, sir. You may be seated. Here's what they said. Nebuchadnezzar, that's the king now. Okay, that's like Jonathan telling Putin. You know who Putin is? <laughs> Y'all know who Putin is? Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia. Okay, Kim Jong-un, you know the fellow over there in North Korea who just stupid crazy. That's like him telling Kim Jong-un, I don't care what you do, I ain't bowing to you. 17. They said, even if the Lord doesn't deliver us, we still will not bow. Now, I confess, I'm old and 17. <laughs> <laughs> and there's been some situations I said, God, I don't know if I can give me the strength to say even. I know you're all deep, you're all, you're all you know, Even if the Lord doesn't deliver me, I still ain't going to bow. I'm expecting great things. I hold on to my faith because there is hope and expectation that God is going to change my present situation. That's why I hold on to him. Because no matter how much money you got, if you're still crazy, you're crazy. Money can't change your craziness. In fact, money will probably make you more crazy. <laughs> no matter how much things you have, it ain't going to make you have peace. Why? Because you just have stuff and still miserable. No hope. 
You can imagine people being hopeless, thinking that this is the end of life. There's no life after this and taking a gun and putting it to their head and pulling the trigger because of oppression or depression and saying, God, I can't make it. When your faith is in God, when you hold on to God, God gives you hope with expectation that things are going to be better. And they are today. I hear the Spirit say, tell them for me, Lester, that there is hope. Don't give up on life. There is hope. I am their hope. You can trust God that he is going to bring you through. Amen? The Bible says we got to understand holding on to our faith. Holding on to our faith not only builds our hope, but holding on to our faith gives us supernatural strength, wisdom, and guidance as we walk through life. You ever discover that you, you only dealt with some people and you don't know how you dealt with them? You say, the reason why you was able to deal with some people, you look back say, only could have been God. Because see, I know some of y'all, my people, y'all got fast mouth. <laughs> I ain't talking about 20, 30 y'all. I'm maybe talking to somebody there. Yo, you got fast mouth. And if somebody says, hey, you finishing the alphabet B to Z, and God says, hold your tongue. Be still and know, Psalm 46 and 10, that I am God, I will be exalted. In other words, among the heathen, God says, I will get the last laugh. So when you hold on to your faith in God, when you trust him, you recognize that God will give you strength. When some of y'all look back, in fact, let me just tease some of y'all mothers. Some of y'all say, I can't deliver this child. It's too much pain. Ain't the child delivered? God gave you some strength you thought you didn't have. Guess what? It's inside of you. He's inside of you. And if God be for you, the word says, who can be against you? Not only will he give you supernatural strength, but you also got to realize when you hold on to your faith in God, what else happens? Not only will God give you supernatural strength, but understand this, holding on to our faith in God helps us to trust God in all situations because he is reliable. I like some, you know, cars. I see Louis Hamilton won the um, Spanish Grand Prix just the other day. Y'all don't know about racing it, okay? I like a lot of racing. Louis Hamilton was one of my guys and Jeff Gordon. Y'all know about Jeff Gordon and NASCAR. But there is a car... Made by a guy called Carl Benz. I guess you didn't know his name was a person. Eh? And there was, yeah, Mercedes Benz, Carl Benz. But anyway, let me not go there. Uh, Mercedes Benz has a motto. You know what the motto says? The best or nothing. Okay, some of y'all like Beamers. I understand. The ultimate driving machine. With all of that stuff, they still cut off. The best or nothing, they still rust. Ultimate driving machine, you still got to tune it up. When you put your trust in God, he is reliable. You don't have to tune up God. And God don't rust. <laughs> God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. That's why I got, you got to hold on to your faith. God is reliable I know some of y'all thinking when I bring your mind back. I know you say, boy, Bishop, I've been trusting in some people and they ain't worth two cents. That's because they're not God. The arm of flesh is going to fail you. In other words, you fail yourself. Let me, let me just get there. You know why you fail yourself? Because you tell yourself, I'm going on a diet. You lying. I'm lying. We say, we're going on a diet. And the first pint of ice cream comes. Oh God, I see it now with the cherries jubilee. God, I can see it right now. We say, I'm just going to take one scoop, one spoonful. We're on a diet, you know. We say, God, I'm going to just take one spoonful. The next thing we recognize is half of the ice cream gone. And here's us getting deep. I wonder who ate the ice cream. Well, only you sitting there with the ice cream carton, eh? We can't even trust ourselves sometimes. 
But God is trustworthy. He is reliable. You can depend on him. And he will never fail us. Let me give you two more there. The Bible is holding on to our faith. Not only helps us to trust in God, but holding on to our faith in God keeps us focused on him and close to him. And that's why God says, draw nigh to me. Some of us, God needs to keep us close. Okay, let me only talk for me. God needs to keep me close. God, I, you know, <laughs> I'm not being sacrilegious, but there's a song you say, just to be close to you. But I just, I need to be close to God. I, I, I need to be close to God. Because you're all deep, and you know, you're, 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 you know, I, I need God. God, keep me close, God. Because if you don't keep me close, I might find myself going back to some stuff. Even though I sing the song, I can't go back. While I'm singing, I'm looking to the way things used to be. God, keep me close. When you keep your faith in God, Paul says there, let us draw nigh or near. It says here, with a true heart. Don't be faking it. Someone said the motto, fake it to make it. No, that's a lie. Because when you fake it to make it and you get to where you think you want to get, you will discover that you can't maintain there because you don't know how to operate in the environment. See, I ain't trying to fake it to be Bill Gates, you know. Because Bill Gates got his own problem. I ain't knocking him, but he, he was married, but now he's going through some stuff. But all the money Bill got, Bill's still searching for some stuff. Trying to find solutions with science. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm sticking close to God. Because the closer I get to God, the more he reveals himself to me. You ever get so close to somebody? I know y'all ain't married. But so, you could get so close. Uh, see, I know where the mole is. And I know where the, 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 the little cut is. Why? Because I'm close. We ought to be so close to God that when God breathes, we ought to feel the breath of God. That's what it means. We, we, the, the Bible says, and the spirit of God. Uh, and the Bible says, and in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, Genesis chapter 1. And there was darkness upon the face of the earth, and the Spirit of God brewed or moved upon the face of the waters. It simply means, and the Spirit of God breathed the ruach of God, the breath of God, breathed upon the face of the waters, the darkness. Some of us, revelation, some of us need God to breathe upon us afresh. We got to say, God, breathe on me afresh because I need a fresh dose of you. So when we hold on to God, we recognize that we need to be close to God. And then when we hold on to God, we recognize that holding on to God not only keeps us focused and close to him, but holding on to our faith in God keeps us at peace with God and in life. People having all kinds of hurrahs in America right now, you know. He said they don't need the mask. And some people say they need masks. And some people double dose and some people ain't double dose. And how you know who get double dose? And just keep your trust in God and do the wise thing for you. Don't worry about this, people. Look here. God said he'll put a hedge of protection around about me. I'm standing on God's word. And God says, whatever happens in my life, whatever he permits, he's going to see me through. So, so let me say, stop being perplexed about what, what man's saying. I know Fauci's a doctor, but now Fauci's saying you don't need no mask in those. And you know, some masks cause a whole lot of folks that have shortness of breath, can't breathe. Probably people getting claustrophobic. Some people can't take it. It's man trying to, now, now let me caveat, legal term, stick up in there, in other words. I'm not saying don't follow medical advice, but I'm saying don't let medical advice be your only source. Because God is the giver and the taker of life. The Bible says, in him was life. The life 
was a lighter man. I know some of y'all right now are scared. Bishop, I don't know what's going to happen. They got the Indian variant, variant. They got the Brazilian variant. They got the Nigerian variant. They got this variant. And, and, and some people, they, we, we like government some of us. You know, we, 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 our moods go like how the governments go shut down, open up, shut down, open up, shut down. Trust God. We say we save, eh? Am I too real for us? Some people say, I ain't taking, and I ain't saying, that's up to you. I ain't taking no shot, Bishop, but you had vaccine before. If you pray to God for yourself and God said, I'm going to work however I choose to work, then you. <laughs> now, if God tell you no, that's on you. If God tell you yes, that's on you and him too. You got to trust God for yourself. I just give you what he says. But you got to trust him for yourself. That your faith in God ought to give you peace in the midst of troubling situations. Here's how the Bible describes it. He says, I will keep you in perfect peace. But you've got to do something. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind, whose spirit is stayed on me. When you hold on to God, you, you understand that we are living in a different dimension than this world. Amen? Finally, and finally, and finally. And Paul reminds us in the book of Hebrews, I'm not going to get through all of this, but let me give you just this. That we ought to hold on to our faith in God. Why? Because not only does God give us peace, but holding on to our faith in God takes effort and desire. And with the help of God's Holy Spirit, we are winners because we understand that there is a prize to be won that's greater than this world. Let me show you how Paul puts it. He concludes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20 through 24. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, I like how Paul writes. Paul is deep, man. Paul, when you read Paul's right, you got to go look up words just to find out what they're all about, you know? That's the whole 12 books. Hebrews is also ascribed to him. I put it to him, even though some people say, well, they don't know who the writer is. I put it to Paul, so that's 13, eh? He says, and I uh, am the very God of peace, sanctify, set you apart, holy. In other words, W-H-O-L-L-Y, make you whole. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body. You see that there? Spirit, soul, and body. Be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here is what it is. Faithful is he that calleth you and will do it. You hear what Paul says? He says when you hold on to God, God is faithful. And whatever God promised us, he's going to do it. I hold on to it. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I saw a quote. It says, loneliness is a word that's in the Bible for people, I'm sorry, that's in the dictionary for people who feel alone and needs company. Then they say solitude is in the dictionary rather for people who want to be by themselves just to have their quiet moments. You decide. Are you going to be lonely? Or are you going to have solitude in God? God says, hold on to your faith in him. Let him guide our lives. Amen? Give him praise in the house this morning. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Thank you. Hallelujah. God is so awesome. I want to encourage you encourage you hold on to God before you leave those of you that are watching via media wherever you are today we always like to pray for you and with you especially if you don't know God that you would find relationship with him for yourself because you can't hold on to anything that you don't have 
Some people are trying to hold on some people who left them a long time ago. Let me make you smile before we pray. You're trying to hold on to size 30 jeans when you were in size 42 now. <laughs> you, you know, I, I don't fool myself. I said, I remember when I was 165 pounds for a long time. Now I'm two pounds. Praise Jesus. Don't make no sense holding on to stuff that left you a long time ago. But you can hold on to God. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Whether you're in the house or outside the house, one of the first priorities of the gospel, the good news, is so that men would come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You're listening to me in the house or you're watching my television today or will watch. I want to pray for you that you would make your relationship, your calling and election sure is what we say. In other words, we want you to have a relationship with God. That if God was to come today, that you would spend eternity with him. How do you do that? The Bible says this, you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead. You shall be saved. That's what the word says. All you've got to do is open your mouth, believe in faith, believe that God is real, that he can save you. Would you pray right now with me? Can I pray with you wherever you are? Let's pray in particular for those that need salvation today or whatever your need is, we're going to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity that you've given to us to share the worship experience, not only in the house, but for those who are watching around the world. Father, now I pray first of all for those that do not have relationship with you, those who may be backsliders, God, those who have not confessed you as Lord and Savior. I pray that they will pray a prayer asking you to forgive them and to come into their lives even now. In fact, right now where you are, if you don't know how to pray, you can pray along with me, Heavenly Father, or dear Father Jesus. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins, my disobedience. You said that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I may not understand it all, Jesus. But I know that I need you. So come into my life. Forgive me, and I promise to live a life that's pleasing to you. My friends, if you pray to press something to that, the Bible says instantly. If you believed in your heart, the Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice over one soul. You've, you've passed over from death into life. You are living eternal life right now, right now. Father, now I pray for those that know you as Lord who are going through the struggles of life. Feel like they want to give up. Father, may they be reignited to hold on to you, to not let go. Father, I even pray for our country, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I pray for the families that are going through the loss of loved ones. The murders that have been happening even over these last few days. Over, over time, God. Families that are still grieving right now. God, may they find peace in you. Pray for leadership. Our spiritual leadership and our churches. Our political leadership. Our prime minister and opposition leader. And those that make laws that will affect all of us. I pray for wise counsel and wisdom and leadership. Godly leadership. Father, now I thank you. For what you are doing right now, even amongst us, we bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, it's been such a privilege to share with you in worship today. Thank you for joining us in worship. I want to encourage you. If you're here in Nassau, we're here every Sunday and Tuesday, Sunday at 9.45, Tuesday at 7 p.m. We're in the sanctuary want to encourage you to come and worship with us of course you can also go to our website the information is there on the screen uh, you can find out more about us and then if you want to be a participant if you want to help to carry this gospel indeed around the world as we do 
And you want to say, preacher, I want to give an offering, a tithe into your ministry, uh, Word of Truth Ministries. If you're here locally, the information is there. You can give direct deposit. Uh, you can bring it into the church, write the check in the name of Word of Truth Ministries International. Or if you're international and you want to give a donation, our inf international information is there. Whatever you need to do, uh, we encourage you to go ahead. And then for many of you, again, I encourage you, thank you for writing to us. I don't get to all of you right away, but thank you for listening. Thank you for writing to us. And, and we know this, that God is for us, who can be against us. And so this is Bishop Cox on behalf of my wife, Elder Vanessa, and all the exciting, awesome people of Word of Truth Ministries. We say so long, and may the blessings and the peace of God be with you until we come together again for another life-changing experience. God bless you. Until next time. Hallelujah.